What's up guys, Shields Nation Tactical here. Uh, today we're going to talk about a little bit about how to uh, set up a ruck and uh, what things to consider uh, when you're setting up your ruck. Uh, specifically we're talking about uh, the FILB, the Philby pack today. Um, I'm going to give you some tips and tricks with this thing because I do think that if you can uh, do some stuff to this, to this pack, um, it becomes a great, uh, great pack system for uh, extended extended operations in um, less than in a non-permissive environment. So, for starters, so you got the Philby pack. First things first, get rid of the frame. Okay, I've talked about it in other videos. I'm not going to go on about it too much, but put an Alice frame in there. Um, this is just one that I picked up. I think it was like 20 bucks. Uh, you can get that. You can do that. You can... Uh, Go to Tactical Tailor and get their um, their frame and their straps. These are just old um, last model Alice straps, Alice shoulder straps, and this is a hip belt that I, from a uh, an Alice style pack, not an Alice pack. But I eventually do plan on putting um, uh, Tactical Tailor straps on this pack after I do some more testing uh, on them, seeing how much I like them. But I know I like this one. Um, the reason for this is, like I said in another video, is um, for use with body armor dudes. Um, that that uh, original Philby hip pad is just so wide and everything, and the straps um, don't allow this uh, this much movement and everything, and they're um, way stiffer, and they have the stupid back padding that you don't need because you're probably going to be wearing body armor, or um, if you're using an Alice pack, the frame... You know, the pack is actually sitting off your back, you know, like it's supposed to be your contact points or your shoulders and your uh, and the hip pad. This isn't like, you, know, you can add a little bit here like I have, um, but you don't need all that, especially if you're wearing body armor. So there's that. Swap out that frame. Uh, if you want a video on how to do that, it's pretty easy. Um, it's a lot like an Alice pack with a couple extra straps. But, um, but there you go if you want. So do that. Swap, so swap out the frame, swap out the uh, the straps. I wouldn't recommend going with the straight Alice pack straps, but um, they guys have humped lots of pounds, um, lots of gear over lots of miles with those straps. So you know, figure out what works for you. But um, I like I like this setup. I like a, a slightly thinner, uh, but still nice hip pad, so I can it can because it can uh, this rides for me. I can adjust this these straps perfectly so that this falls directly in between on my on my waist directly in between my war belt and my body armor when I wear it um, so I can still wear all the kit that I need to um, and make movement but uh, I can also <coughs> uh, get my get the weight uh, onto my hips for my ruck so that's step number one replace the straps and replace the frame okay the frame is huge uh, second, we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about setup, okay? So if you're using a Philby pack, um, and you can get the pack, then you can probably get the pouches that come with it. Okay, so how to set up, so your pouch set up. Alright, is this thing going to stand up? Probably not, because, okay, so here we go. Alright, obviously you don't have to do it like this, but I'm going to make recommendations for this and obviously your setup's going to change you know depending on what you're doing this is just a good general use um extended stay uh, or extended stay system um you know like you know you've got one ruck you know maybe an assault pack and you've got to live out of it you know how are you going to do it um this is it it's not really meant to, uh it's not going to be like a patrol pack or anything like that it's not meant for that it's meant for just carrying your sleeping gear, your clothes, your chow, your water, um, all that, all that crap, you know, uh, some extra ammunition maybe, but in stripper clips, you know, um, we're not looking for having, uh, lots of fucking, you know, like small little, like GPS pouches and other shit, like, again, this carries your tent, your tarp, all that shit, okay, so first recommendation I'm going to make is, Put some sort of GP pouch right here on top. Okay, reason being is this way you can drop pack, 
and just immediately get into this, okay? It's a lot easier to get into than the lid. It's a little bit bigger. Uh, it's a little bit bigger than the lid. Um, and it's just a, it doesn't have to be this pouch. It can be just any little GP pouch, but that's what I recommend. Put a little GP pouch on top so that you can get to stu uh, certain things quickly, you know? Um, for me, I usually keep, uh, oh, I usually keep like some snacks, um, some emergency toilet paper, um, stuff like that just here on the outside. And depending on the size, you can, you still got a little bit of molly on each side. Maybe you want to, uh, you could even put maybe some mag pouches or something like that, have, have some ammunition, but I recommend a GP pouch on the top for quick access things. Hold this over. Okay, now we're gonna get to the front. Hydration carriers on the front, or on the back? I guess this would be the back, technically. Hydration carriers on the back. Okay, the reason being, um, a lot of guys put them on the sides. The reason I don't like them on, the, I'll, we'll go over why I don't like them on the sides. But one of the main reasons is you, if you're drinking from one, okay, because, you know, you're drinking from one, okay, so you, and then that one's empty, okay? But now you're, like, you know, because if you have 100-ounce bladders, now you're uh, about, what, six, six and a half pounds, maybe? Six, six pounds, six, seven pounds heavier on one side than the other. So now you're leaning and everything, and now you got to drink all that water. So unless you want to be swapping hoses and, and switching in between drinks, it's not really that great of an idea. Um, the one downfall to it is, is, um, yeah, you're going to be, it's going to, it, uh, sits on the uh on the outside of the pack it's on the very back of the pack and water's pretty heavy and so um you know it's gonna but it's gonna pull you back a little bit but uh if you know how to pack you'll be able to uh, counteract that and i promise um you'll be okay especially if you put uh, your other water where i show you uh in a little bit <clears throat> so i recommend these right here we'll go over um, another reason here in a sec then I recommend the sustainment pouches right here, close, close as close to here as you can. So on this um, closest bit of molly to the frame. Okay. Again, reasons for this. Again, you don't have to just put chow in here. In fact, I don't like to put chow in here. I put other stuff in here. But um, I just like I like these here because it just gives me two nice big pouches um, to put shit in. Um, chow or just cook gear or whatever you want. I mean, these things are pretty big. These things will hold. This one right here has two, uh, two tarps, uh, two Marine Corps tarps stuffed inside of it with room to spare. So, you know, let that be. But the main reason is because they, because I think the sustainment pouches have to go somewhere, and I don't like the, I don't want them back here because when you fill these up, you know, these stay relatively flat. These sustainment pouches get really fat, okay? And with nothing to compress them down, they're just, they're going to swing a lot, okay? These don't swing a lot. These don't move um, a lot when you have water in them. But these tend to swing, so you need something to strap those down. Um, so I like these right here. Plus also, too, these hydration platters, or hydration pouches take up a little bit more real estate than um then these these take up four or five and these take up six i believe okay uh wide rows of webbing so when you do this this leaves you a little bit on the side here this little bit of space i like this little bit of space um because you have a sleeve back here i like this little bit of space to uh strap certain things down whether it be a fucking chair like a little fold up uh, camp chair um, an axe, fucking, I've put a rifle here, you know, you put a rifle here, um, you could go back and forth, I've seen it either way, um, either way works fine, I just kind of prefer this, prefer this way, you could move it here, and strap stuff there, and then you'd be able to put, if it's long, you'd be able to put it in the pocket, but I use this pocket for something else, and these straps have never failed, they always, um, hold exactly what I need to, need them to hold in place, like I said, whether that be a rifle or whatever. Another good reason is that these hydration bladders, now that you have a larger pass through here, this is where I like to put skis in the winter. So you can run your skis through here because you have a full pass through down to the bottom. 
you can run your skis in there. You have a really good place to put your skis along with like an axe and stuff on this side without having um so that way if you're not you're not putting an axe like here and then running even more weight on the outside pulling you back. So there's my reasoning for that. Um, when you're setting up these pouches on the side, I recommend this. Always run this top strap along here, okay? And run this strap through the buckle or the little end of the webbing here. Now you're probably wondering how the hell do you do that? You know, it doesn't fit. All you gotta do is take this off, run, run the end through, and there you go. This ensures that your the strap isn't gonna, because naturally it tends to want to fall below. This just helps it not, and also you can unbuckle and give yourself a nut, and it just hangs there. It doesn't fall all the way down here and get in the way of stuff. Um, it just falls right there, and then you can adjust it, click, boom. Um, can't do the same thing up here. There's no way to do it, but just run it under the, uh, but basically just run it under the fucking, under here. That's all I gotta say. Um, again, same reason when this is closed, this isn't flopping all around over there. It's not going all the way over there. So, next thing I recommend, I don't actually have it on, but get another lashing strap. One more lashing strap, okay? Um, you can do this multiple ways, but um, I usually just uh, get two, one more of these, or two more of these buckles, put them like right here, okay? You can actually, they come with the repair kits for these packs, so put a buckle there, put a buckle there and do the same thing. Run a strap with two male buckles. Run a strap through both of these so that it stays and you can tighten these down. Um, you don't want to add too much pressure because they are going to have water bladders in them, most likely. So don't crank them down too much, but it's enough to just uh, suck them in a little bit, uh, keep them tight, keep them good to go. So there you go. There's that. Um, and as far as pod placement, that's pretty much all that I'm going to give you. Um, like I said, you could put stuff here. You could put uh, GP pouches or uh, magazine pouches or fucking whatever pouches and shit you can fit there. <clears throat> um, but as far as pouches, you know, that's all I got. Um, other things to make note of, I recommend keeping two two-quart canteens uh, on each pocket because it's a really good place for them. They hold well. You can tie them down with this last line of molly that the uh, sustainment pouches don't take up tie them off and it's a good place I'm, I'm a firm believer that you shouldn't have water inside your pack um i don't like having water inside my pack because all it does is it leaks and i find out too late and it gets all over my shit and even though it's usually all waterproofed um i just don't like it i like having water on the outside of my pack it makes it easy to easy to change out easy to fill up um easy to do, do everything with. I've always got access to water, so that's where I keep my water, always on the outside. So then two, two quarts, boom, boom. Okay, so then you've got what capacity for? Five, eight, 14, 14, three, six, 10, 14, yeah, 14 quarts of water um, on the outside, which is about, you know, that's about what you need to be carrying for, for most things. You know, a lot of guys have, oh, they have, like, one camelback. It's like, well, that's not even enough for a day, you know. It's, you're a liter short of a day's worth of water. And that's all you have. They're probably not going to go well. But anyway, next we get to the bottom, these straps. How I recommend doing this, okay. So what a lot of people, a lot of people think that, that whatever they, because I like to strap a decent amount of stuff in this area, right? Um, this is where I tend to keep uh, like a tent, usually, because your sleep system's in here, so I usually keep um, an isomat, a tent, and my tarps, okay? Because I always keep uh, two tarps for just various things, various shelters and stuff, okay? Generally. Now, a lot of people think they have to cram all that right here, um, but you don't. What you can do is, see this? You can do this, and you can put stuff right there. So normally, what goes right here, this goes right, um, usually like my tarp, uh, tarp, and um, sometimes the tent, but usually not, but like a tarp, and some other stuff will go right here a lot of times, and then that gets cinched up, and then the isomat and the one-man tent can go right there, and it all gets, and it all gets cinched down. 
it makes it real nice. Um, I see a lot of guys putting way too much shit and just, they think they can just work with this area, but they can work with this as well. Um, I've seen guys fucking, uh, if I have to pack a lot of gear and I don't have time to throw a sleep system carrier on here, there is enough, um, um these straps are fucking long enough. Dudes, uh, I haven't done anything to these. These are just how long the straps are. These straps are long enough. I have put a modular sleep system on the bottom here, tightened it up, and still had enough room to put an isomat in a one-man tent right here. Okay, so you know, be strategic about where you're where you're lashing gear. You know, lashing gear to your pack doesn't isn't a problem until shit starts swinging and getting weird and everything like that. If you can make it work and it's tight and it moves and it's like it's part of the pack, hey, go for it. Other than that, there's really not um, a whole lot else to talk about. I think this is a pretty solid setup uh, for for Minutemen out there. <clears throat> if you can't get this exact setup, you can get very similar ones, and I'll go over those as well, such as the uh, Molly 2 Molly 2 pack. You can get a very similar result out of. I will go over that in another um, video. Hell, a large Alice pack or a Malice pack or something, but um, you know, take this for for you know what it's worth. Um, have some general ideas about it, and like I said, if you want to run a Philby pack or because you know a Philby pack is very uh, you know, you could adapt this like I said to a Molly two, to a CFP ninety, to an Alice pack, um, whatever you know, any kind of this style of pack, you could adapt it some way. So. Hopefully, uh, I taught you guys a little something. Oh, another thing. Add um, handles and 550 cord. So this is a handle I made. This is a 100% 550 cord. Yes, I know the Philby pack has one, but I don't like carrying the uh, carrying it by the little handle that's sewn onto the pack. I like carrying something attached to the frame. So this is one. These are just the original donning straps that I just wrapped. I'm thinking about taking these off completely, actually, and just putting some around the uh, frame. Uh, but I will uh, I've done that on Alice packs before, but these have uh, the donning straps. So, But um, I've only done one. But this is what it looked like. This is what it is now. Uh, much better, much stiffer. Um, I like it a lot better. It just gives it a little bit more something to grab. But there you go, guys. Um, that's pretty much my my ideas on setting up a ruck <clears throat> for uh, long use in an in a non-permissive environment. So for any uh, any guys out there with questions, you know, feel free to ask. Uh, I'll answer all that I can, you know, pertaining to the gear and everything and all that. And uh, hope you guys enjoyed. You know, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Please, everything helps. Um, if, if, fuck, if you didn't like the video, dislike. Um, send it. Just make sure you, if you're going to dislike the video, give uh, give criticism. Give constructive criticism. Tell me how I can do better. Um, but other than that, uh, just, like, just trying to pass on the knowledge. And uh, have a good day, guys. Peace.